My name is Patricia Bridges of Bridges Pottery. I'm a potter on the North Shore of Long Island, and I've been working in clay for over three decades. Today I'm going to show you a very simple technique using an interesting tool for glazing that's a metal atomizer. There are a number of different ways that you can use this uh, atomizer. It can be used on um, moist clay, on greenware, on bisqueware. So there's a whole variety of different ways to, to try it out. And it is quite fun to, to experiment with. First, I'm gonna start by creating a couple of pieces. So this is done now. I'm going to let this dry very slowly. Each glaze that you use is going to obviously be a different consistency. And it takes a little bit of experimentation to determine just how thick or thin. And you'll have different results. A thicker glaze is going to look a little bit different sprayed out than a thinner glaze. So some of it is, is, is trial and error, but you can get some interesting results. So I'm going to take a little bit of this just yellow glaze just to try out on some paper. I'm just going to put a small amount, maybe a quarter of a cup, in. I'm going to try this just on some paper first and see how much breath I need to make a, a spray, how much coverage I get, um, and experiment a little bit. You can use oxides, underglazes, and stains as well. If you want to practice a bit, try just spraying into a sponge. A little messier. And this is what you experiment with. This is a little thinner. So you can really see the gradation. And it really, it, it gives it a nice spray. So now I have a collection of pieces that are fairly smooth on the surface that I can apply some glaze to. Some of these I'm going to glaze, um, a base glaze, and then spray some different things on. I'm going to have a little bird. These smaller plates have the um, same thing. These I've also cleaned off all the, the backs and I've waxed these. The larger piece as well. I have waxed the foot and checked to make sure there's no places where there are sharp edges. So before I begin this, just a word about the sprayers. Um, there's two pieces. There's a copper tubing here and the blower tube here that need to be positioned. They do move a little bit, so you need to make sure that they're positioned at this angle and you do not need to fill it all the way. And a caution about spraying, obviously, with any kind of glaze, normally with a compressor you'd be wearing a mask. In this case, you can't. This is not meant to spray large pieces, um, to create a lot of particles in the air, as obviously that's a hazard to your health. So this is meant for small areas, controlled situations, and a small amount. The second point I want to make is that someone might think if I breathe in, I'm actually going to inhale some of the glaze. And the way this works is that you're really not inhaling directly. This is not a straw into the cup, so you don't have to worry about that. So for this large platter, I've um, given it a coat of a creamy glaze just as a base. I've got a little cutout that I made out of, it's actually a material called Tyvek and if you get anything in the mail from the post office or uh, from a, another shipping kind of uh, bag, it's a slippery, it cuts very easily and it's washable so it's something you can reuse again and again. So I'm going to use this in various places and I'm going to use two different color glazes on top of this.
So some of this for you will be experimentation like it is for me and seeing what colors work and... Uh, with this plate, I want to spray around where the bird is, not get the spray on the bird. So I'll mask a little bit off just with some paper towel. When you spray the glaze on, it may look very dramatic, but don't be surprised when things are fired if they look a little bit different. This will probably just add a change in the tone of the base glaze around the tray. So now I have a selection of some different colors. You'll only really know when things are fired how these glazes may interact. Mm -hmm. 